Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You know, I mean, the one size fits all mentality about the will of God is like, well, anybody can do this, and if I'm doing it, you should do it. What happens when you go out to buy a new outfit? Well, if you're anything like me, you look at stuff. You look at a lot of stuff. You try stuff on. Some things you think you're going to really like, you try it on and you're like, I don't like that at all. And then other things you think you won't like, if somebody talks you into trying it on, which is hard, you're like, well, you know, that does look pretty good. I didn't think that looked good at all, but it does look pretty good. I've had the experience a couple of times of taking friends of mine shopping who had very strong mindsets about what they would and would not wear. And I was trying to help them get into a new mindset because I felt there would be a lot of other things that would look good on them. And sure enough, if you can get people to try on something else, then they're like, well, you know, that's, yeah, that, that's not bad. So let's just pretend that I'm shopping and we're going to relate this to finding the will of God. Now, you know, some things, it doesn't take me very long to figure out it's just not me. <laughs> what, what do you think? Yeah? No? no? No, we all know that's not me. Okay, how about... That, that it? You don't, you don't think I'd look good in that? Well, I don't know how they thought I was going to try these on. They taped them to the hangers. Okay, let's see. Whew. I know the first thing my husband would say, you can't wear those, you can see through them. Man, I have to go through the grinder mill every time I get dressed with Dave. Um, well, you know, this, I, maybe I'll try this one on and just see what we think here. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Uh, not so much. I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. You know what? You'll never find the will of God for your life if you're not willing to try some things. You got to find out what fits. I tried working in the nursery at church. It didn't fit. <laughs> Trust me, I knew it. The babies knew it. <laughs> that didn't fit. I tried street witnessing because the church that I was going to at the time was really huge on past not gospel tracks and street witnessing. And you know what? I could do it, but it wasn't me. It just, I didn't enjoy it. It was hard for me to do. It just wasn't me. But you know, I was the kind of person I could, I could organize a group. I could get people motivated because I've got that leadership quality. So I thought, okay, if we're going to pass out tracks, I'm not just going to go pass them out by myself. I'm going to get a bunch of women and we're going to pass out thousands of tracks. So I got this group of women this one summer. Some of, you, some of you remember this, Rose? And we went down, we went down in Fenton, and we put gospel tracks on every car that we could find. I mean, we put them everywhere. Me and this group of ladies passed out 10,000 gospel tracks that summer. And, and, now, I, we, I was excited about that. I was following my heart doing that, and I got called before the elders at our church and rebuked <laughs> for organizing something without their permission. So, you see, many times when you're following your heart, the devil's going to arrange for somebody to come against you. But as long as I was doing their program and I was going out on the streets every Saturday morning and doing it their way, even though I hated it and it didn't fit me and it wasn't working for me, then I got the applause of people. But when I stepped out and followed my heart, got much more fruit. I wasn't passing out 10,000 tracks on a Saturday morning. But when I did what I felt like God wanted me to do, then I got in trouble. Is anybody hearing me? I said, is anybody hearing me? 
So you got to just keep trying stuff on, you know. Before it was time for me to go on television, I tried to go on television anyway. Ooh, what do you think? <laughs> nah, 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 I don't think so. And so I took some of my employees and Okay, believe it or not, I used to wear a red suit that has these things hanging all over them. <laughs> Back when I, I mean, I, I thought that was so cool, I'd lift up my arms and all this fringe. <laughs> and you know, here's the point I want to make about that. Some things are right for a season. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> there may be some things that you're doing in your life that are the will of God in this season they look right on you in that season, but they wouldn't look right 10 or 20 years down the road. Some things fit you when you're 20. You know where I'm going. <laughs> that don't fit you when you're 50. Amen? So don't be afraid to try things. Now, you know, then there's things that people tell you anybody can do. It's called one size fits all. <laughs> now, actually, the truth is, I could get this on. <laughs> and I would, but it would mess my hair up. And you all know me well enough to know I can't stand that. But here you go. We got the little arms here. You know how, I mean, the one-size-fits-all mentality about the will of God is like, well, anybody can do this, and if I'm doing it, you should do it. I don't even think this will fit me. Ginger got it on. She's better than I am, I'll tell you. You can't go do something just because somebody else does it. Just because it fits them, I don't care if it is one-size-fits-all. I may be the one-all that it doesn't fit. Every pastor's wife doesn't have to lead the ladies' group and play piano. Come on. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, every pastor's wife doesn't even have to work at the church if that's not what she wants to do. Come on. Oops, I can't even get that thing hung up right. So I try... <laughs> You guys are going to be busy laughing at that all night. I'm gonna get that down there. Now, I tried to go on television before God put me on TV. And I got some of my employees, and we rented a cable studio somewhere here in town. And I decided I was going to have a talk show. And I was going to interview them. It took about five of the ladies that worked for me. And we set up their chairs, and we set up my chair. And we had our couple of rented cameras out there. And we were on one cable station. And... And the um, only problem was is I would ask the interview question and then I wouldn't let them answer it. I'd answer the question. <laughs> so we'd sit there for an hour and do this and nobody ever got to say anything but me because I couldn't keep my mouth shut long enough to interview anybody. And I still have a little problem with that sometimes and we'll get letters saying if Joyce is going to have guests, she should let them talk. Well, <laughs> so they're back there coaching me You know what? I tried so many things. I mean, I tried street witnessing. I tried working in the nursery. I tried to learn to play guitar. I mean, I tried everything that you could imagine. And then I finally tried teaching. Whoops, that worked. And then I tried writing books. Wow, I can do that too. Hallelujah. Then when God put me on TV at the right time, awesome, that's working. Now we're on all over the world in almost 80 different languages. That seems to be God. I finally got around to something that works for me. Woo! My favorite coat. I love this thing. It doesn't wrinkle. It looks good. I get compliments on it. See, when you're doing what's right for you, you'll know it and everybody else will know it. Some may be jealous, but they'll still know it. Amen. Come on, give God a big praise. Oh, well, I can't get that one hung up either. 
Good news, it doesn't wrinkle. Now, if you're ever gonna find out what God wants you to do, you're gonna have to try some things. You can say, stay in your little boring boat, or you can get out and try to walk on water. People who try things make mistakes. People who try things sometimes get judged and criticized. People who try things are the ones who do things though. If you never try, you're never gonna find out what you can do. You gotta step out and find out. Step out and find out. Now, Peter tried to walk on water and guess what, he did. Esther tried going before the king without being summonsed, and guess what? He accepted her. She became a queen, but you know what her attitude was when she went before him? If I perish, I perish. And you know what, I think we need to have a bolder attitude. We need to say, I am not gonna stay safe and bored all my life. I am going to take a chance, I am gonna take a risk, and I'm gonna find out what God will do through me. I am gonna find out what God will do for me. You know, in Acts chapter 16, I love these verses. We're not gonna take the time to go here, but Paul and Silas, it says they went from town to town and preached. There's about five verses here that are really interesting. And it says they tried to go into this town and Jesus wouldn't permit them to. Then they went to this town. Then they tried to go into this town and the Holy Spirit would not permit them. And then they went to this town and they went to this town. But the thing that I love about this is they knew they were called to preach and so they just got out there and started going from thing to thing to see what would work out. And you know what? Paul was a great apostle, but he did not hear perfectly from God. Sometimes the only way we can hear from God is to step out and find out what his hand is on and what it's not on. Are you hearing me? I said, sometimes the only way we can ever, see people say, well, I, I wanna hear from God. I wanna hear from God. Well, you're not gonna learn to hear from God just going. <laughs> Speak, God. <laughs> no, you're gonna think, well, you know, may, yeah, maybe, may, and then you, whoop. That didn't work. You know, some things that you try on are too big for you. Some things that you might try to do might be too much for you right now. You might not be ready for it. You don't have the confidence, you're scared all the time, you don't feel like you're doing a good job at it. Then don't keep pushing and pressing, find what fits you. And I'm telling you what, the older you get, the more important it is to you that, that what you have on is comfortable. <laughs> Amen? I'm telling you what, I used to wear it no matter how comfortable it was if it was cute. Are y'all keeping up with me? Yeah. You know what, a lot of times people will think it's cute to be on the platform and they may do it even though it's really not right for them and it makes them a nervous wreck and they end up all stressed out all the time. They're not even doing that good of a job. Just because something's cute doesn't mean it's right for you. I don't wear it now just because it's cute, it's gotta be comfortable. I don't want it to be too tight around the waist. I don't want it to itch me. I don't want it to scratch me. I don't want it bugging me up here. I mean, I practically ruined my feet wearing four inch spike high heels walking on these platforms for years and years and years. Not now, honey, I got the grandma comfort shoes and I don't care what anybody thinks, amen? Man, I got elastic in my waistband tonight, woo! That feels good. Got me on a long top so nobody can see what's under there. And then some things that you try to put on might be too little. Let me see. I saw those hanging on the rack. What did we do? <laughs> In other words, some of you are doing things that are way too little for you. You've got skills way beyond what you're doing. Come on now. I said, you've got skills way beyond what you're doing and you need to step out and do the greater thing that God wants you to do. 
Don't do things that are, don't wear things that are too big. Don't wear things that are too little. Don't wear things that are uncomfortable. Keep trying something on until you get the right outfit, then go for it with God. Come on, give God some praise. I had one other thing here I was pretty sure wouldn't look good on me. What do you think? I don't believe that's it either. So, step out and find out. How many of you are gonna be courageous enough to start finding out what God has for you? Now here's one that I found interesting. Let's look at 1 Chronicles 28. I want us all to be right in the middle of God's will for us. And remember, sometimes it's seasonal. We drove by a couple of buildings downtown here today where I worked when I was in my 20s, once as a payroll clerk and once as a bookkeeper. Matter of fact, one of the first times, well, the first time that, second time I guess I saw Dave, he was working downtown too, and I needed a ride home from work, and I had asked a guy that worked with him, he knew I needed a ride, and so he told Dave, and Dave had already seen me outside my mother's house and thought I was cute, so he came and picked me up. It all happened just a few blocks from here. But you see, at that time in my life, it was right for me to be a payroll clerk, and it was right for me to be a bookkeeper, but that wouldn't fit me at all now. So don't be afraid to change as the seasons in your life change. You know, I've told people that different things in our ministry have changed and there'll probably be more changes and sometimes they'll bring thoughts to me, well, what would you think about letting go of this or what would you think about that? And you know what I've, my attitude basically is at this point? I'm not married to anybody but Jesus and Dave. I'm, you know, there's nothing that I'm doing that I have to keep doing the rest of my life just because I've been doing it for a certain number of years. If it's not right anymore, then I'm not doing it anymore because I want the fullness of God's will in my life before I leave this earth. And very often when you're gonna take hold of something new, you gotta let go of something old. And most of the time, it's very hard to let go of the old thing. Come on, some of you are dealing with some old things right now. I mean, you're dealing with stuff that God got tired of so long ago. If the horse has been dead 10 years, the rule is stop trying to push him up a hill, dismount. How many of you can tell when God's anointing is not on something? All right. If God's not in it, you don't want to be in it. You know, David wanted to build God a temple. He wanted to build a temple for the ark as a resting place for God. And he was so sure that he was supposed to do it that he started getting all kinds of money and offerings from people and so he had all this gold and silver and all the materials for building the temple and then God said no I don't want you doing that but watch this I thought this was really good then David the king rose to his feet and said hear me my brethren and my people I myself intended to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord as a footstool for our God and I prepared materials for the building. So he felt something was right. He stepped out and tried to do it. But God said to me, you shall not build a house for my name and presence because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. Now, right about then, I would probably have thought, well, I guess I'll never get to do anything because I've been a bad person. However, the Lord, the God of my, the God of Israel chose me before all my father's house to be king over Israel. And then he goes on and says some other things, but here's the key. God said, you cannot build me a house. You can't do that, but you can be king. So it wasn't that he couldn't do anything. It was just for whatever God's purpose was, because he had, had blood on his hands, it wouldn't keep him from being king, but he couldn't build the house for the ark to rest. And so even if God tells you you can't do this, that doesn't mean you can't do that. And I would think that it would even be a greater thing to be king. If it was me, I would have thought, well, my goodness, if I can't build you a house, how can I be king? So we just need to follow the leadership of God. Amen? I tried to be my pastor's secretary one time, and that didn't work. Matter of fact, he's here, Pastor Shelton. I was part of their church for many, many years, and I tried to be his secretary once and got fired at the end of the day.
Oh, well. As I said, I finally opened my mouth to teach, and that worked, so here we are. All right, now, another thing that I want to talk to you about tonight is having the courage to, to hold on and not quit and give up. And God gave me, I think, a good example. You know, when you go out and you buy a puzzle, how many of you have ever put together a puzzle? All right, most everybody here. How many of you ever gave up because you couldn't find a piece and you just got so tired of looking for the piece you just forgot it? Okay. So, usually you buy a puzzle because you think the picture's pretty on the box. And you have no idea when you see the picture what it's going to take to put it together. Come on now. When I listened to my first teaching, back then it was cassette tapes, and this vision rose up in me. You're going to go all over the world and teach the gospel. Change lives around the world. Oh, I was like, yes, that's a beautiful picture. Wow. Then, when you get this dude home, Oh my gosh, what have I signed up for? <laughs> That's about how many pieces there are to your dream, honey. <laughs> Come on, is anybody home tonight? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, you see me here now and it's all hand claps and wow, 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 wow. Well. Where were you when I was picking crab legs off of the little banquet floor where I was going to teach another 10 people somewhere here in St. Louis for the 30th year in a row? And, you know, I mean, th this puzzle, it's got a lot of sky, and it's got a lot of grass. And I don't know about you, but I got so tired of putting together sky in my life that I could have just screamed my head off. How many of you know what I mean by that? That means you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And you don't want to give that up because that's all you got. But you think, if I have to do this one more time, I am going to rip my hair out by the roots. <laughs> Is anybody understanding me? Lisa, you get this. You get this, don't you? Amen. How about it, Chris? You get this. You understand this. You're with me. You're going to want to use my puzzle example somewhere. Yeah, you're going to take this, aren't you? You already told Nick, get me a puzzle. I'll tell you, I can't keep anything myself. It's not fair. <laughs> you know, we usually start by finding the four corners. They're easy. Then we put together the outline. And then what happens when you feel that there's a piece missing? <laughs> Some of you are kind of at that place right now. You got part of the puzzle put together, but there's something missing. And you're pretty sure the manufacturer left it out of the box. <laughs> Come on. Well, I just think God forgot that piece. Well, you know what? Maybe the piece is something that you wouldn't like it to be. Maybe the piece you're missing is you need somebody else to help you. Hmm. Two people got that. You know, maybe I want to put this puzzle together all myself so I can say when I'm done, well, look what I did. But maybe God's saying, uh-uh. You're not going to do that without me. You got to start letting me into everything that you do. And you got to start giving me the glory. Stop trying to do it yourself. Come on, you can't change yourself. You got to let God in and let him do it. You can't change that person you're married to. That may be your dream. That may be your dream, but let me tell you something. Only God can change people. Amen? Come on. We've all got dreams and visions and hopes and plans and prayers. Maybe your dream or vision is not worldwide ministry. It's probably not. Maybe you just want to get your house cleaned up and get out of debt. I don't know. 
I don't know. Maybe you want your husband to shave or you want to lose some weight. I don't know what it is that you want. But the point is, as dreams come to pass with much business and painful effort, you pray and you wait, you pray and you wait, you pray and you wait. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. And there's many pieces to the puzzle of our life. But all things work together for good. Everything that's going on in your life right now, if you trust God and you believe him, I don't care what it is, it can work out good, but not until it's put together with some other things that may still be coming that you don't even know about. om te dansen in de zon en te zingen in de regen. Een tijd om uitbundig te lachen en onbekommerd op avontuur te gaan en om je vervelende broertje te plagen. Kind zijn betekent leren, groeien, geloven en dromen. Maar ook nu zijn er op de wereld heel veel kinderen die geen idee hebben van hoe je kindertijd zou moeten zijn. Ze zijn alleen bezig met overleven. Deze kleintjes moeten s'nachts vaak slapen zonder een dak boven hun hoofd. Ze hebben dorst, lijden honger en voelen zich eenzaam. Sommigen van hen hebben zichzelf die dag meer malen moeten verkopen... voordat ze hun misbruikte lichaam te rusten kunnen leggen. Helaas is dit niet een verhaaltje over een handvol kinderen in een onzichtbare wereld. Nee, het is een keiharde werkelijkheid. Hier en nu, voor echte kinderen. Onze kinderen. Sommigen leven bij jou om de hoek. Anderen hier vele duizenden kilometers vandaan. Maakt die afstand dat een kind minder behoefte heeft aan liefde, bescherming en verzorging? Maken geslacht, ras of omstandigheden dat een kind minder deel uitmaakt van onze menselijke familie? Nee toch? Een mens is een mens. Een nood is een nood. En een kind is een kind. Zo kostbaar in Gods ogen. In welke uithoek van de wereld een kind ook om hulp roept... wij moeten er gehoor aan geven. Op welke grond de tranen van een kind ook vallen... wij gaan erheen. We have traveled long and come so far upon this road and we've seen mountain high and valley low we will battle on Yeah. 
mensen wereldwijd die ons hun steun waard vinden, zijn wij in staat om vele hulpbehoevende kinderhanden vast te pakken. Maar er zijn nog veel meer kinderen op de wereld die schreeuwen om hulp. Geeft u daar gehoor aan? Ze zijn op zoek naar een helpende hand. Helpt u ons mee om ze die te bieden? Iedere dag worden we door vele stemmen, gedachten en meningen overspoeld. Hoe kunnen we erachter komen wat God ons door bepaalde levensvragen en dagelijkse uitdagingen zeggen wil? Joyce Meyer legt in dit boek uit op welke verschillende manieren God met je kan communiceren. Bestel nu hoe je Gods stem kunt horen telefonisch op 026... 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-maier.nl